What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another Gun Guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all the stats of every one of the weapons in COD World War II. In today's episode, we're going to be covering one of the brand new pistols, and this is the Enfield No. 2. First up, as always, let's have a look at some of the in-real-life stats. So the Enfield No. 2 is a British double-action revolver that fires a 38 200 round at approximately 30 rounds per minute. In COD World War II, we've got a damage profile of 50, 40, 30, which is actually identical to the M1911 in this game, and this means it's always going to be a 2, 3, or 4 shot kill. Our rate of fire I was able to hand test at 280 rounds per minute, and we can't actually use rapid fire on this weapon. Our statistical minimum time to kill within the 2 shot kill range is quite fast at 214 milliseconds, then it has a very steep drop off in the 3 shot kill range, it's 429 milliseconds, and finally, if you stretch it out to the 4 shot kill range, you have a painfully slow time to kill at 643 milliseconds. Moving on to headshots, we get a standard headshot multiplier of 1.1, and this means that headshots without the high caliber attachment are never going to change the number of shots it takes to kill on a full health enemy. As for high caliber, we get a 1.5 times multiplier to the head, and this means within the 2 shot kill range, it's still going to take 2 shots to the head, so it has no effect within the 2 shot kill range as far as number of shots to kill on a full health enemy. But within the 3 and 4 shot kill ranges, one single headshot is definitely going to be helping you with the high caliber attachment. Getting into our ranges, we actually have a pretty decent 2 shot kill range at 15 meters, and then our 3 shot kill range extends out to about 30 meters. Beyond that, it's going to be 4 shots to kill out to infinity. With advanced rifling, we can increase all of these ranges by 25%, so it's not a bad attachment to use on this gun. And finally, I wanted to put this side by side with the M1911 for you guys, because this gun is very similar to the M1911 in a lot of ways, and this is something a lot of people, myself included, have been wondering about. It turns out the Enfield does have a very noticeably longer two-shot kill potential compared to the 1911. As for hardcore with this pistol, it will always be a one-shot kill, unless you're shooting through cover. Next up, I want to have a look at the aim down sight aim assist range, and the reason I want to look at this is because it's equal to the M1911, and it is an outlier in the pistol category. It's quite a bit lower than all of the other pistols, aside from the 1911, at 15 meters. As for hip spread, it's standard for the pistol category, it's the same as all the other pistols, aside from the machine pistol. Moving on to idle sway, this is also standard for this pistol, it's the same as all the other pistols, and what this means is it has a little bit of idle sway, but it would affect your shots at longer ranges if you ever decided to challenge at long ranges, but that's not really viable with this pistol anyways, so generally you don't have to worry about idle sway. Getting into recoil, this is the big downside with this weapon. It has very, very strong vertical recoil. It doesn't kick side to side at all, but even between just the first and second shot, you've got a massive gap there, and this is one of the big things that holds this pistol back. As for our magazine, or in this case cylinder, we get 6 rounds with 18 in reserve, and we can't use extended mag on this pistol. The reload add time with this pistol is incredibly fast at just 817 milliseconds, and this is the fastest in the pistol category. Moving on to handling and mobility, our aim down sight time is standard for pistols at 100 milliseconds, which is extremely fast, and therefore quick draw is absolutely not needed. Actually, just in case you guys are wondering with all of the pistols, quick draw only reduces your aim down sight time by literally one frame, so it's practically not even noticeable. And our sprint out time is right in line with that at 100 milliseconds, which is standard for pistols as well. Our movement speed is 100%, and our aim down sight straight speed is 76%. Both of these values are right in line with the other pistols. Getting into my recommended attachments on this pistol, first off, we don't have very many to choose from because we can't use rapid fire and we can't use extended mags, and in addition to that, quick draw is practically useless with this, and same thing goes with FMJ, you're not normally shooting through cover with a pistol on enemies, and therefore I would never really recommend FMJ, and that just leaves us with three attachments, and I'll just rank them in order from what I consider to be the best attachment to the worst attachment out of these three, this is going to be steady aim, advanced rifling, and high caliber. Now getting into a couple of example classes here, keep in mind these classes are more so designed for going pistol only, so the primary is kind of irrelevant. The first one I have here is the way I prefer to run it, and that is with the dualist basic training skill, so I've got one of these pistols in each hand. With this one we're using the airborne division, and I'm using steady aim as well as a sticky grenade. This thing is an absolute beast up close, it's actually better than all of the shotguns in this game aside from the combat shotgun in my opinion, and I find it to be a ton of fun to run around with dualists with these pistols. Next up is just an example class if you don't want to run this with Duelist. With this one we're using the Resistance Division which will give us an extra attachment on our pistol as well as that tactical knife so if we get into a super close quarter situation we can always just knife somebody. And with this one also I have Hunker as my basic training skill instead of Shifty. I would normally run Shifty for a pistol on the class but first off I don't need that really fast swap reload ability because this already has an extremely fast reload time. 
And second, I don't really feel like I need that unlimited ammo for this pistol because it has such a low fire rate that you don't really burn through the rounds very quickly at all, and therefore I would rather have the explosive resistance. My attachments on this are once again going to be steady aim, and with this one I also threw on advanced rifling. So there we have it, that's going to wrap it up for the Enfield number 2 pistol. As always, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of this pistol? Do you think it's better than the M1911 or a little bit worse? What are your overall thoughts? For me personally, it did start growing on me a little bit because it does have that longer two-shot kill potential compared to the 1911, although that really slow fire rate is extremely unforgiving, and therefore, unless you're running Duelist, I wouldn't necessarily recommend running this pistol as a primary weapon, unlike with a few of the other pistols in the game that are absolutely viable to use as a primary weapon. Now, this pistol wasn't the only one that was added with this event, so I will be covering the second pistol, which is the Reich's Revolver. The gun guide for that one will be coming within the next several days. Also, I just wanted to point out, if you guys have missed the gun guide I did on the other four pistols that were in the game before these pistols launched, I'll be sure to leave a link to the playlist in the description below. You guys can go check that one out. I did all the pistols together, compared them side by side, and hopefully that, combined with this, as well as the next gun guide that's coming out, will help you decide which pistol is best for you. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.